Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff Mosher. It's Adam Kaplan. This is an exciting Inside the Birds because we have a game very, very close Thursday night, and a lot's on the line. The Eagles just took over first place in the NFC East by beating the Cowboys, winning their fifth straight, Washington losing to the Steelers, and guess what? If the Eagles don't win on Thursday night, they're not going to be still in first place in the NFC East. That's how airtight it is, Adam. So we've got a lot to talk about, some transactions, some injuries, uh, a lot to go inside here in this episode. Yeah, and look, we, we finally have something between Washington and Philly. I'd have to go back. I can't remember a Commanders and Eagles game where they were both good at the same time. I'm sure people re remember that as we're speaking, but it, not, nothing comes to my mind. But it's, it's good to see that Washington's actually finally a team. They're well ahead of schedule. No one was expecting to be in the playoffs this year, and they're, they're really headed to it, considering kind of where the rest of the the the, uh, the conference is. So it's good to see. And you got two quarterbacks, very competitive, doing very well this season. And you got Dan Quinn, who's been in the Super Bowl as a head coach. They should have won that game. That's another story for another time. But it, look, you, you've got the specter of new ownership with Josh Harris, who owns the Sixers, his group, and now they own the, the Commanders, and no more Daniel Snyder thankfully. And you, you've got uh, just a lot going on here. There, there, you, you mentioned the sure week. It, it, it's it's interesting because you've got injury situation, which we'll get into with both teams, which we, we have some interesting stuff that we learned uh, over the last 24 hours for both teams. And then you've got, look, you 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 know how, how this looks. Whoever wins this game's got a decided advantage because when you go down to tiebreakers, obviously head of heads one, conference it, it, is two, and other factors, but it, it's always good to win in your division, and it's it's never easy. The, in these these Eagle Washington games, they've taken a life of their own. We've talked about these the, even when Washington was really bad. For some reason, something would happen in one of these two games where you go, "Wow, I didn't see that happening." Yeah, no, you're right. There's always th th you made a great point there. The history since I started covering the team in 2005, right? So we're almost 20 years in here. Um, is that neither team has ever both been really good at the same time. There have been plenty of just like memorable moments, usually like the Monday Night Massacre or the big fight between Jason <laughs> Peters and Chris Baker or um, the time that the Eagles went, the one between Deshaun Jackson and uh, who was the roided up safety that they had? Um, Leroy, uh, Leron Landry. Leron, yeah. Well, they, yeah. Let's not accuse yeah. him of that. The I'm people sorry, suspected I'm sorry. that. The very yes. big looking safety with the yeah. neck three times the size of a normal human. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, Trent Cole stomping on the um, the old Indian logo at the. I mean, they're just, it's usually of, it's it's actually what you think of when you think of Eagles Cowboys as far as the, the teams not liking each other. That's always been Eagles Washington as well, just not liking each other, but never also on the same level of each other. The Eagles have 90% of the time been the better team. And whenever Washington's won, it's been kind of like an upset, like the last few years. So this is exciting. I like it. I did see somebody tweet to your point on uh, the new direction of the franchise. They got rid of Daniel and got Daniels. So they got rid of Daniel <laughs> Snyder, got rid of Daniels. Yeah. And there you go. So uh, I am excited about it. It is always good. It's nice to see a little new blood here. Um, and it's nice to preview a Washington Eagles game for the first time, maybe since I ever started covering a team where the winner is going to be in first place and good at the same time. So that is that uh, we're you're, we're so like my Washington memory is is of the the game at the end of the year. <laughs> I think you just said that where Jalen Hurts gets pulled and Nate Sudfeld oh. gets thrown. I mean, just some just some really oh. weird games. So that's good that this is a game between two really talented teams, and we've had a lot of great content and we continue to have great content this week on inside the birds and there was a great gun on one uh that everybody will see with uh, Derek gunn and trey thomas former eagles left tackle friend of the show of inside the birds been on uh plenty of our, our programs as well he uh, had some really interesting things to say uh, about the eagles about their defense that he's been observing about their offensive line really good points on that and just for bonus coverage, you know, he spent this past summer with the Kansas City Chiefs. I think it's the second time he's done it, mm -hmm. coaching in training camp. So he had a really interesting viewpoint on the Chiefs and what makes them tick and why they're so good as well. Not that you needed – yeah, I mean, people know why the Chiefs are good, but you get an extra insider's perspective from his vantage point of being with the team. 
Yeah, and he talks about it in this interview with D. Gunn. In fact, if you're a Patreon member, you got it on Tuesday. Everyone now will get it later today for the public. He also talks about the secondary, and, and I think we're all kind of blown away about how good uh, you know the young kids are, Quinion and um, Dejean. It's been pretty cool. So yeah, old number seventy two. Who uh, I remember Trey. Gosh, we first couple years we did the pregame show. He was he was on our panel from uh, was it where was that in um in uh, Fishtown, right? Goose Goose, uh, Goose Island, yeah, Goose Island, yeah, Goose Island, yeah. Goose oh, Island. right, right. That was I love that show. That was so much fun. It was. It was a great time. So make sure everybody checks out Gone on One. We have Inside the Tape coming out with Greg Cosell. We'll love everything. It's just we're packaging as much in as we can. And, of course, Inside the Birds pregame show will be Thursday morning. Everybody will be able to catch that as well. Uh, let's talk about the, the major transactions, uh, if you want to call it major. I, I think the transaction itself was minor, but it opens up the door to a bigger discussion, and that's the Eagles releasing – the tight end, Jack Stoll, he was uh, waived, I should say, on Tuesday. Uh, usually in the case, you wave a guy like this who's been with you, you try to bring him back on the practice squad. We'll see there. But, Adam, it invites the bigger discussion of, wait a minute, why are mm -hmm. you making a move on your 53-man roster to open up a spot? Is that possibly for Jordan Mailata to be able to play Thursday night, which would be interesting? Well, I mean, I'm looking, honestly – I don't see any other reason why they would do it because they're on a short week. It's not like you're going to bring someone off the street to play. You would either do that, as you're suggesting, activate my lot off of IR. He's already on designation uh, to return. I mean, other than that, because EJ Jenkins is out of EJ Jenkins is, is out of um, elevations. They, he's they've used their three already. You know, obviously, they but they could elevate Uzama. You're not creating a spot for him. You would have to create a spot for Jenkins. But to me, to risk Jack Stoll. No, I say risk. Yeah, look, another team could claim off waivers and you lose him for good. But he's been that that wide tight end who's been very valuable to them. I'm a little surprised that they would risk it that way. Because honestly, what is what is Eli Ricks really doing for them? Right. He, he, honestly, that would have been the guy to me. Tristan McCombs has been inactive. I know he when he plays, he's a good special teams player. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't play anymore. He's been inactive. So I'm a little surprised that they would take that risk. I just can't think of anything other, on a any other reason why they would do that other than to activate my lotta today is wednesday by the way i believe the way in fact barring something unforeseen i believe the deadline is it's really odd the way they do this if if it's a normal week you have to, if you're playing on sunday you have the day before saturday for pay eastern but if you're on a, if you're on it's really odd if you're on a um if you're playing on a Monday night, you have that Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern to do it, the day of the game. I don't know why they do that. Why should you get an, an, an extra day to do that? It's beyond me. Yeah. But they do that. And Thursday night games, where you're in a your disadvantage, you get, I'm almost certain it's 4 p.m. Eastern, the day of the game, to do that. Yeah. Now, I mean, I, I obviously, we know that even though Mylata has been on injured reserve and has missed his four games, I'm not trying to suggest that he's done nothing for four weeks and now they're trying to, you know, get him into a game with just three walkthroughs. Obviously he's been ramping up and you can do stuff. Um, Actually but... two, by the way, they didn't have a walkthrough on Monday, just so you know. They oh, that's anything. a good point. Uh, that's yeah. right. Cause Monday's report was an estimation. So, so yeah, it would only be two practices and they're not even real practices. They're just walkthroughs or jog throughs or whatever you want. Uh, yeah. But obviously he's been doing stuff. I'm sure he's been on the treadmill. I'm sure his mobility checks out for him to be even in the 21 day window. Mm -hmm. You just wonder about like conditioning and things like that. And um just re-aggravation, especially a big guy in a hamstring injury. So I don't know why you would open the spot unless you plan to activate him and play him. But I also don't know why you would play him given the circumstances. I just think that that's a difficult ask, but they're the, I'm not the expert on this. It just seems like it, it just seems odd compared to what we see other teams do with players coming out of the 21 day window. Um, Usually, you'll, I mean, nowadays, I feel like you're seeing guys get that full two or three weeks before a guy gets on there, and here they're just ramping him right in. Well, well, well it's interesting because remember, I brought up the Nico Collins situation. Collins was yep. fascinating. So he only practiced one day, uh, looked good. From what I understand, he, he practiced well, but it was a light practice on Friday for a sunny game. But not only did they activate him into the window, he, he practiced, and they activated him off of IR. So if you're going to activate the guy off IR, you got to play him, but they didn't wind up playing him. Right. By the way, he also had a hamstring strain, pretty significant one. 
So now I know he's a receiver. He's got to move more and all that. With Mylotta, he's not even getting a practice in because of the lateness of getting in. On they got in around twelve thirty, a quarter of one on Monday morning. They 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 all, all the players should just get treatment. There was nothing. There was no. There was not even a walkthrough. Mm-hmm. Tuesday, they had a walkthrough. Now what Sirianni did say uh, earlier this week on Monday in his press conference that because he was asked about like how could you possibly get guys ready who are coming back from injury if you're not practicing? How, how are you going to be able to tell? He's like, well, there are things they could do. A jog through is a little bit more strenuous. You get the blood mm-hmm. flowing. And then you could do, he said they might do some individual work, but it's not practice. You're not, it's not physical play that we're used to in practice. So I, I, as you said, look, we're not experts in this. I've just gone by 27 years of covering this specifically from an injury standpoint. I know these things pretty well. Uh, I'd be surprised if he played, but I'm not ruling it out because they have better information than we do. Of course. They think it it, on, as you said, if they, they have the information, if you talked about the hamstring strain, right? Mm-hmm. If the levels are good, everything's out of a system, whatever, when you have a hamstring strain, there could be some blood, the fluid, you, that's all out. He's, you talked about him moving. If he's moving great, he looks great, you go out there. Now, if there was a playoff game, he's playing. I don't care what the hell the circumstances. He's course. playing. You know, he's clear. You, you, he, he's good to go. You'll, you'll, you'll worry about any, any risk later on. He's got to play. You don't need to play. This is not necessary. You you have Fred Johnson now. I thought this was good in the inside the tapes. Was it in Patreon we talked about this or inside the tape where Greg talks about the the getting Mylotta back, the advantage of not having to have him. Mylotta's not getting help. You don't help Mylotta. You right. don't have an extra tight end on the side. Right. That's the big difference. So that was a great point that Greg made. Yep. Very, very big advantage for the offense there. All right, so that's the situation with Jordan Mailata that we will continue to monitor. Let's get to the rest of the injury report, which, of course, is presented and powered by our friends at Stretch Zone. If you go into Stretch Zone and mention Inside the Birds, you will get 10% off your first month membership, Stretch Zone. Uh, so, obviously, there's there's the pop-ups, there's the lingering ones. You know, Devontae <laughs> Smith was able to uh, participate in Tuesday's walkthrough with the hamstring. That's great. Um, yeah, good news for him. Dallas Goddard, uh, he was – now, the hamstring is off. He's off yes. the report for the hamstring. It's now the ankle Yes, did participate in Tuesday's walkthrough. All right, so technically he's the only pop-up injury. No one else was was, was added to the injury report. So, yes, here's a great thing. The hamstring's not an issue. It's off the injury report. Now he has an ankle, but he did get some work in in their walkthrough. That's good. With an ankle injury, that's good, Okay. Off the injury report, A.J. Brown with a knee, and I Smith with the ankle, Fred Johnson with a knee, Mekhi Becton with the ankle, and Cam Jurgens with the wrist. So where all these pop-ups last week, none of that. Um, that's on offense. Now, defensively, N'Kobe Dean came out of the, the game with a groin issue. Um, he, he he took some reps on Tuesday. That's a good sign. Bryce Huff, who Vic Fangio is the confirmer of injuries, <laughs> he, he he talked about what Bryce Huff is going through with the with the with the wrap he's got on his hand and he he's got his, whether it's a soft cast or whatever he's wearing, he ta- he, he did it in pretty good detail. So Br- Bryce Huff is wearing a wrap or a cast and there's only so much he can do. He explained why he's not taking a lot of reps and Jalex Hunt sure as heck did. In fact, he took reps early in the game. In fact, Greg Cosell said what second, I guess in the first quarter, the sec- second series for Dallas. So I, mm-hmm. I'm assuming that was the first quarter, right? Uh, I believe it was the second quarter. Yeah. Oh, no, first second quarter, or late, late first. first yeah. Okay, late first. Well, wow. Yeah, for for um Jake Sun. So Darius Slay with we saw it in the game. Uh he has the ankle issue. The groin was removed. He did get some work in the walkthrough. He's the one that I'm not sold was going to play. Cause to me, and I know they're gonna have what we call the mini buy, they're gonna have extra time. But why risk something with an older player, the oldest starting outside corner of the National Football League? He's had a foot issue earlier this season, groin, now ankle. You, you saw he had to be – They he, he left the game, then he came back later. That's great. Don't – why push it? Isaiah Rogers is shown to be a very capable fill-in. I'm not – you know, I'm not the coach or the 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 um, you know, the, the trainer. They'll, they'll obviously, they'll make the call together, whether it looks good enough. But to me, I think it's – that's the one where – that one would, would concern me for lingering for an older player. Why take the risk? Off the injury report on defense, Josh Sweat with a hip, Nolan Smith with a groin, 
Ben Sumerin, it was cleared last week, and Trot Jr. with a hip. So it's good. That's good. They're they're in fairly good health. Yep. But the, the, to me, the one to watch is Slay because you don't need a spot play him. What the, I mean, they don't. Corners now play almost all the snaps anyway. Some play one hundred percent of the snaps. Mm-hmm. So to me, why, why take take that risk? We know we already know what the, the problem with Huff is. Uh, I'm just glad AJ Brown with that knee issue that popped up. I'm glad that he's off the injury report. Yeah, yeah, they need Slay to be healthy in this game. I mean, they need him to be able to play the full game. Um, so hopefully he'll be all right because I think I don't think I like the Isaiah Rogers matchup as much. Uh, I know he's played all right, but if he has to go up there against, um, I hear you. Th- those are some tall. Fi- I mean, McLaurin's a playmaker. We know that Brown, Diami Brown, can make some plays. Noah Brown he can run. Have some size. Both of those guys have some they size do. too, to them, and that could be an issue. Um, especially with Jaden Daniels' ability to kind of th- back shoulder or to throw it high. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully Slay can can get there and play. All right, we will talk about the commander's injuries in a second. Adam, I did have my third stretch now, third and three weeks at stretch zone. Uh, it was a great stretch. So I was able to get my lower body stretch and then go out for a run, and I could just tell the difference immediately because now I'm I'm on st- my third week of getting stretched out, so I feel looser. I went for my run. It was great. So next week I'm going to try because this was the recommendation. I always thought of getting loose before a workout. I know you do your stretches before. tennis. They talked yep. about the stretch recovery being equally as important as the stretch precursor. So ne- they advised for me to try to get my uh, run in first and then get to stretch because they uh, talked about the the recover- the, the way stretching uh, goes with recovery. I'll feel even 10 times better after a run. So that'll be my my mission for next week. But I wouldn't have even known that without Stretch Zone. No, the two things. So you definitely communicate with them, folks, when you go in and get your free stretch. You tell them what's, you know, what what you're, you know, what you do athletically if you do anything or what, what, what kind of job you have and what, why you're coming in. You obviously want to mm-hmm. feel better. That's the number one thing. And for me, I explained to them my issues with not bending down. It's really bad. I, I need help with this. And you guys to help me with it because there's something mentally. Why am I not bending down? I, I talked about last week about shots to my right. I was not getting. I was like, what, what is wrong with me? And then once I got stretched, my mental, like mentally, I was, I, that block went away. But um, to me, man, if you're, you know, you're a jogger. I, I don't jog. I, I run in tennis. To me, I gotta I gotta be able to be stretched well where I don't worry about anything. And that's why I go right before I go, before I play tennis. And the one thing we'll, we'll leave you with, folks, is whatever you do, you want to feel better. And that's why I'm an advocate. I, I remember I'm gonna give you a quick story. This will take 30 seconds. So this happened last July. My I've had two tennis injuries. One was my deltoid, uh, which is which is here. Okay, if you're watching on YouTube, my, my right arm, because I'm a righty. And I, I had an adductor strain, which is connect from the hip to the groin. I because I've covered injuries, I know injuries fairly well. And I, but I didn't know whether it was my groin or adductor. I'm not a doctor, so you know, I went. I I, I was playing tennis one day at a at a clinic, and uh, I told the pro Jonathan, I said, "Dude, I don't know what the hell's going on with my groin. I tell this. I, I got to go see a doctor. I can't. Play. I got to. I I hobbled and I finished, and then I called the doctor. You know, I went in. He said, "Is that you have a light adductor strain? You, you're, you'll be okay. You're not going. You don't need to get tested. He could, he could tell there's very little swelling. And he goes, he goes, it's going to stay off. Don't play tennis for two weeks. Here's a band and here's some literature. I'm like, wait a minute. You know what? Uh, I don't want to use a band. Uh, I, I say to myself, I'm paying stretcher. Let them stretch me. So I went in. I told the guy James, who's now over at uh, Cherry Hill. I said, here's the deal. Let's do number. Th- you know, it's three, five, and seven. I'm like, we're going to do a three. Okay, let's just do threes. I'll communicate to you. And he would communicate to me. He would, you know, how how you feel? How's this feel? I would tell him. And I was playing tennis in less than two weeks. We we got rid of it. We got rid of it in two weeks. And I, I, because I, he, he really smart, this guy. He told me kind of, here's what we're going to do. Here's the plan. And I just listened to them. These guys are experts. They're called, um, called practitioners. Mm -hmm. And I just try, you know, you've been there now three times, you know, and, and the communication to me, is so key yep. and breathing is another thing. I don't know about you, but I didn't really know. Oh this no, it's important it when they, yeah, I know you, I, I you got to breathe. <laughs> I did not, you would not believe how like backwards I was. <laughs> I didn't know anything. And, you know, I had to ask them and they were giving me all, you know, the pointers. So anyway, I, I, we're both, obviously you're an advocate, advocate. My wife would say 
major kayaker. She goes around the country, uh -huh. Niagara Falls, Canada, Jones Island, everywhere, Vermont. Wow, that's yeah, impressive. She, yeah, she's crazy with it. She's very strong. And uh, she said Austin uh, in, in the Exton plays is great. He, she said she felt like she grew an inch by, by the stretch on her legs. That's great. I was like, what? I said, hon, whatever he did, tell me. Because I need to feel, I said, I usually feel great, but I, in fact, always. Yeah. But I need to know what makes me feel taller because I was six foot half, six foot one half inch. I think I'm 5'11 now. So oh, like, man. Getting down to motion. You get older, right you know, my, my dad, my dad went through the whole thing. No, I'm just joking. But uh, no, they're, they're great. And uh, 12 locations in Philly and New Jersey, Chester County, Haverford, uh, on, on, um, on Lancaster Avenue, uh, Devon near the Whole Foods, which I've been to, I don't know how many times. Uh, see my guy, uh, Jared, ex as I just mentioned, they're phenomenal there. See Hassan and uh, his group, they're awesome. South Philly, Washington Ave, uh, Montgomery County, Elkins Park, Upper Dublin, 611, Feasterville, where you are in Jersey, Cherry Hill, Mount Laurel, Franklin Lakes, Northfield, Princeton. Sign up for your free stretch, stretchshow.com. I'm telling you, you're going to feel better. Yeah, it's funny you said you said um, how you know about injuries. Like we we know about injuries more so than I think than common folk because of our jobs, and they're very shocked. Like I know I was getting my IT band stretched, and like oh you know you know where the IT band is? I said I said I didn't say this, but I was thinking in my head. I'm like I'm Rick Burkholder trained man. I know eh, I've seen foot what? models and I've seen skeletons. You know Rick Burkholder, who for those who don't <laughs> know was is Andy Reid's you know right hand man trainer he's he's the the chief trainer but he was with the eagles and whenever andy couldn't explain anything he would bring rick out and rick would do a press literally a press conference there would be reporters surrounded by him well what do you mean there's an it band or an ac joint? and rick would have like a model and he would show you where all the ligaments and the muscles and the bones were so i i'm like that's my response i'm rick burkholder trained i know what you're doing i know what's hurting and i know what the the body is telling me so. all right do you know where the it band is uh yeah of course of course uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh -huh. I just got it stretched. <laughs> well, what is it? It's, it's see, I'd heard of it because Wentz tours IT band when he tours ACL, which it's is like, crazy. It's kind of like your hip glute area. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's on the side. It, it's sort of like on the side and go through your hamstring. Uh, that, cause, cause what'll happen is they'll go, okay, let's do, what do you want today? Your quads or hamstring. You want your IT band out. I'm like, let's get the hamstring and IT band. It's kind of like the same, similar yeah. stretch. Yeah. But uh, the quads before, I, before we move on here, that is the most difficult one. I'm I'm a glutton. I love it. I that's the most challenging one because that is the one that makes me unbelievably more loose than the hamstring stretch for tennis. Yeah, it is the most incredible thing. Uh, I'm telling you for tennis, I folks, if you play pickleball like you do, you play soccer, any uh, hoops, baseball, um, folks, male or female doesn't matter. We're, we're all we're all doing it. We want to feel better. Go to stretchzone.com. And by the way, if you want to email us, you have any questions, we'll answer them. We're happy to do it inside the inside the birds at gmail.com. If you have any questions about stretch zone, just put on the, in the su subject line SC or stretch zone. Give us 20 questions if you have them. I promise you we'll answer all of them to help you out. All right, let's talk about the commander's injuries, Adam. Okay. Um, the big one for them is their running back. They've, they've made do without him, but Brian Robinson is a good running back in this league. He's been dealing with with a hamstring uh, in his Tuesday, in their Tuesday, whatever it's called, walkthrough, jog through, whatever, uh, he was limited. And I don't know. I don't know if he's going to make it. It's tough with these short turnarounds, but obviously that would be a big boost for them if he could. I'd be surprised if he played. Here's why. So he re-injured his hamstring. He he pulled up two weeks ago in pregame warm-ups. He just couldn't go. They thought he was going to go, but he couldn't go. Limited last week. He's not taking all the reps now. You're on a short week. I know Eckler's not the player he once was. You can't grind carries with them. They have Jeremy McNichols, who I'm told is a really good pass protector. Chris Rodriguez, who's got some explosion. He's a bigger back. They have Jimmy rigged it between the three of them to make it work. It's not great. It's not Brad Robinson, as you mentioned. But why would you risk it on a short week when he's your bell cow with a hamstring? And it's not he's clearly not 100 um, percent But look, he as you mentioned, he did go through parts of their walkthrough on Tuesday. And they have one on Wednesday, and that's it. So we'll see what happens. Uh, now their offensive line is a is a is a mess. So here's how we understand it. Um, they they are pretty optimistic. They don't know for sure if Cornelius Lucas is their top backup left tackle and right tackle is going to be available, but he's getting closer as we understand it. 
Uh, he's a big dude. He used to be with uh, Chicago and he and Washington. He, he's a he's a very serviceable veteran mm-hmm. who started earlier this season. So what happened last week? And it's they had some really bad luck. The right tackle Andrew Wiley. They thought he was going to go, but he couldn't go. He was actually active but didn't play because through pregame he he just couldn't make it. So what they did is they put Trey Scott, uh, uh, Trent Scott, Trent excuse Scott. me, who's yep. more of a is more of a really a He's more of a right tackle guard. They play at the last second because they they had nobody else. He had to play left tackle. It didn't go all that well. And Brandon Coleman, who's really been trained as a guard and left tackle, he had to move to right on short notice. wasn't great. Again, they had to help everybody out. Uh, uh, Biadish, uh, their center, is dealing with a couple of injuries. Um, actually, they added a third now. He's been dealing with this thumb issue for weeks and a rib issue. Now he's got a foot issue. Oh, they my. think he's got a chance to go. I mean, again, their offensive line is super banged up. It's not very good to begin with. It's super well coached and well schemed. But man, they're I, I don't know how I, I gotta be honest with you. I don't know how the hell they're I know Cosby's great at right guard. I don't know yep. how they're getting through this thing with this group. I just yeah, I mean, they weren't a dis- like the Cowboys were a disaster on the offensive line, given what the commanders had to overcome with what you said about their left tackle and having to play uh Scott there and then Coleman right. That, they scored what twenty some odd points against the uh, the Steelers, who have a great, they're great. Defense. No, they're... yeah, they they move the ball fine. I mean, they could they didn't run the ball great, but um, the point is they were not completely discombobulated or dysfunctional, whereas other teams probably would have been. So they're doing a good job of of compensating. You know the way we've seen the Eagles sometimes do that when they've had injuries that have limited them. No, I mean I, I give uh, their coaches credit. I just I, but just overall for a talent standpoint, they got one stud. Yep. Biotish is better than average. Allegretti and and Wiley won Super Bowls with the Chiefs, but they're oh, just okay. And Coleman, my from what I understand, they, they you know they they saw him as a guard left tackle, not a right, because he's super athletic, you know, talented guy. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have the ideal height that you'd want for left tackle. You know, Michael Michael Dieter's a journeyman center. Chris Paul, uh, not the basketball Chris Paul, but Chris Paul, the uh, the guard who's uh, they, I know they're pretty high on him as a backup guard. He's in his third year, but this is just, it's one of these things where, and I know the kid Daniels gets rid of the ball quickly. He's a great processor and all that. I'm just a little surprised their offense is as good as it's been. It's hard because usually you feel like you have to have a very good offensive line to, to score as many points as they are scoring. It's been pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. If they hit on some offensive linemen in the draft of free agency in the, in the coming years that they watch out because they're already yep. ahead of schedule. Uh, as far as other injuries, Adam, I know the kicker was dealing with something and they had Zane Gonzalez kick last week. Yeah, Gonzalez did a great job, a former uh, draft pick of the Browns. Mm-hmm. The Seibert, also Seibert has been – actually, he's the best kicker in fantasy this year, if you, for those who play fantasy. Uh, he's had seven, seven field goal game against the Giants in week three really helped. Did him. he really? Is that what it was? Yeah, I remember okay. they beat the Giants 21-20 well, you know uh, on seven field goals. You know what's crazy about that? Despite all that, I, I picked him up in two leagues three weeks ago. I don't wow. know what people were thinking. and uh, Unfortunately, it's this right hip injury. Hips – as I understand it, are a common injury for kickers. So he's limited. I, I can't imagine he's going to kick because he didn't kick last week and he's still limited. Gonzalez is back on the practice squad. He reverted back to it. So he's available there. But the big one is Marshawn Lattimore is not expected to play. He is in practice in over three weeks. It's unreal. He's had hamstring issues for eight years going back to Ohio State. And they he passed the physical. It's not like they didn't know this had a, hamstr- had a hamstring issue. Uh, Mike Sanderstill, who's an outstanding rookie out of Michigan, um, he is filling in. Now, he's going to be their nickel once Lattimore's ready. The, the, uh, the, the plan, from what I heard, is to play him at, at nickel, which is really what he was drafted for. But the funny thing is, he was a receiver when he went to Michigan to start out. Mm-hmm. So he could clearly run, but because he's a smaller guy, he projects more to nickel than being an outside corner, but he could play outside. But mm-hmm. then. Down the road, once they get Lattimore healthy and not having any setbacks, and Quan Martin, who's really, really good player, who's who was their nickel last year, is now back at free safety with Jeremy Chin, who's playing better football. Yeah. St. Juice is a tall corner. They're pretty good. I know Emmanuel Forbes was drafted by a, n- a different regime, but he's playing better. Not great, but he's playing better. This has the potential to be a pretty good secondary. 
Yep, it does. Well, I expect Washington will will be a pretty formidable team, uh, not just this year, but going. I, I don't think we're going to see the typical have a good year, then bomb for five years and have a good year. Yeah. And bomb. I think that they're going to get their act together. And, and, and one other guy, and this guy was severely overdrafted by the Dolphins, Noah Igbohogany, it's just first rounder. He should have been a third rounder. Auburn guy, right? Yeah. Correct. Right. And he, um, I, I was stunned when he went in the first round. I didn't talk to anyone for that trade. The Dolphins wrapped in the first round in uh, 20. That It was late first round, but still he should have been a third round pick. It yeah. never worked out at all. He, he didn't do anything for them. But you know what? He's got a second win here with Dallas. It didn't work out, but he, it's, he's hanging in there. He's he's actually kind of starting depending on how they come out up, if they're coming out in nickel. Because, you know, the Eagles are a nickel team. Some of the teams just come out playing five mm-hmm. DBs. The way it is. So uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, – this is one of those teams, folks. They've got our one of our favorites of the show. This we love Frankie Louva. We'll get more to him when we do the pre the pregame show. But the, and you just touched on it down the road. Once Adam Peters gets his over time because he, he has a very good pedigree, you know, working with John Lynch and, and and the Niners and how how they draft. I know they're excited about some of the draft picks. They're they're so far ahead of schedule. No one is expecting this. This is a great story, right? And it's just so cool as you started the show. I'm just glad that we actually have a meaningful game in week 11 between the Commandos and the Eagles. It actually means something. This is cool. It does mean – it means – that should be like the slogan for thir- the Thursday night game. It actually means something. I know. Uh, it, it, you folks that say in the comments on uh, YouTube, uh, people I know love doing that when they go, oh, no, because we'll <laughs> say something and we don't know, and they'll go, no, here's what happened. Someone research it. I would love to know. When is the last time a game? No, not don't give me week four. Give me second half of the season when both yeah. teams were kind of running neck and neck and it meant something. Because th- this is super cool. Because w- we had to suffer through the Daniel Snyder years, and when I say we, just as we love football, and I know we we get a, we have a very good Commanders group that watches our shows, which we appreciate it. Yeah. So, folks, feel good about this. You got something good going on. It's pretty cool. Just get a stadium, please. Just get a. Real I know it's terrible. Stadium. I know they're good. Ugh. Are, were they? Aren't they building it? Am I wrong? Aren't they? I thought they. I hope so. I, I'm are gonna no, but I know they have. Don't they have the land? I thought they were. Probably. Like Snyder was. I would just Snyder knock down stadium. that stadium and build on top of it because that's stadium. Still <laughs> on top of it. I, I don't even want to look at it. It's like it, one of those it, things that scars you for life. I just want it demolished. I never want to be able to have to see it again. I think it's a te- oh. God. Worst sight lines ever. Started. Don't get me started. The, the, for the media folks, it's like a flying saucer. You're like. <sighs> I don't know what to tell you. I thought Candlestick was weird. The, the, I was Candlestick Park. Were you ever there for a game? Yes. I, that, I'm sure you that, were. Yeah. That was terrible, too. But at least you're in San Francisco, and you can be like, yes, yeah, it's beautiful, right on the yeah. water. It's nice. It's, it, was one one. Of the, it was a top three worst stadium, football stadium that I could have ever be in. This is the worst. I've uh, By far, It's in. this is one that's in Landover, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. I think it's a Landover. So yeah, this is uh, it, it, it's absolutely brutal. But you know what? I, I it, this game is in this game's in Philly. It looks like for now. By the way, it's a very overcast. It right now looks like the rain's going to hold off. Pray it does. Let's have a clean game with the weather. Yeah. All right. Um, we thought we'd have some fun and uh, give a little bit of our Eagles midseason awards here. A little late, but might as well do it and we'll have some fun with it. Almost mid-season we call it. The almost mid-season awards. Almost mid Well, the yeah, the the more than mid-season or post yeah, mid yeah. <laughs> Well, well again, see, they've now technically passed the mid-season mark of the 17 game season. True. Cuz they played nine games, but yeah, we uh we we got that and yeah, I I, I, you know, I, one of the things I want to do, I, I definitely want to give some shout outs to these coaches. A lot of these guys we haven't met before, but we don't know at all. But I, I just think that sometimes we don't acknowledge great coaching because we, we were very critical last year because it was true of some of the uh, on defense was a disaster. Mm-hmm. But and we'll get into that. And look, this idea guys could just be great without coaching. I know Barkley's been unbelievable this season. He's never played even close to this well. I'm telling you as a fact. The Giants never thought he was this good. <laughs> they always <laughs> loved him. A He's a great guy. Very good football. Yeah. But they never saw him play this well. This is – and I don't think it's just Saquon as the guy running it, but he's also got some help with coaching and a scheme. But anyway, we'll All get right. into that. So maybe you're uh, foreshadowing something. Before we go on, you know, there's a lot of sports going on right now. The NBA and college basketball has joined – the chat room to go along with hockey and college football and NFL football 
and you know there's a lot of great concerts that are probably coming to definitely coming to people no matter where they live at uh arenas near them it's a great time to be using the game time app all right not just for sports for concerts too they have a great feature called game time picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier because game time picks filters out the fluff to show you only the incredible deals on great seats. You don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets to get the ones you want. And this is why we love the super deal. That's what it's called. The super deal. It is one of their many tiers of deals that you can find on game time picks that gives you the best value for where you're sitting. And our, as we always remind you, you get to see where you're sitting before you buy the ticket with their view from the seat function that they have on the app. And it's fantastic. And of course you're covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. And that includes event cancellation protection and job loss protection. And of course the lowest price guarantee or game time credits you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time picks, download the game time app, create an account, and use code BIRDS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code BIRDS, B-I-R-D-S, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. So uh, for our midseason-ish awards, Adam, we'll start off with Offensive MVP, which I think is a pretty, you know, it's a landslide, right? I mean, you were just talking about him. Saquon Barkley has been, I don't know what the Eagles would be without him. At this point, I, on that point, they're below 500 team. Here's why. Maybe. Yes, their defense has been a nice story. I know their schedule's been great. We we all acknowledge that. But Barkley is such a big part of what they do. And by the way, it's almost similar to Lamar and Derrick Henry. Because now that Hurts is back as a runner, he last year he was clearly wasn't healthy. It wasn't right couple games early this season, we weren't sure. He looks so good, Hurts, as a runner. And when Jalen pulls it out, right, and runs and doesn't, you know, obviously on an RPO, he's, you know, he pulls it out and runs. Some of them, the defense is totally faked out. He looks healthy as hell. And it just those two together as runners is great. The scheme is great. And Barkley, and we've talked about this before, the one big knock on him is he was not a very good second level runner. Like if it's blocked up well, certainly would hit a he's explosive. And then he would run into contact, which was we were told by outstanding personnel executive who gave some great uh, free agency notes on him, said that he would not have signed him, paid him twelve and a half million. And I told this guy, Are "You sure about that?" I told him recently. He goes, "Hey, dude, I'm just telling you what the tape looked like." It goes, but hey. He never played like this before, and I know Greg Cosell told us the same thing. Greg's blown away by Barkley. Everyone was talked to uh, Joe Banner for uh, uh, on our interview with him last week. Oh man, oh coach Joe was so such a proponent of the Eagles paying twelve and a half million, and I, I don't want to give the answers to the test for those of you who just joined Patreon with John, Sam, and Dwayne who joined us on Patreon recently. You got to see that interview. Wait to hear how Joe breaks down why they should have signed Pat Bark uh, Barkley. He, by the way, he told me. In March, I was wrong on twelve and a half million as well. He goes, "That's a bargain. It's going to be a bargain. You're going to you're going to learn that." Mm -hmm. I'm like, really? <laughs> he told me he was right. Um, Saquon has never run like this before, where he hits the hole and instead of running straight ahead and running into contact or not seeing where the the the, the second area to go is, now he sees it and finishes like he's never finished before. He's unbleeping believable. Not only is he my MVP, you know, running backs typically don't win MVP awards uh, for the NFL. Mm -hmm. I, if 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 he now we'll see what happens with his health. He he you know he's short week. You know, we'll, we'll see how many carries he has, and we'll we'll just see the rest of the season if he could stay on the field all the time because that's one obviously one big issue that's been an issue for him. But his improvement as a runner is absolutely phenomenal, and he's obviously a Hall of Fame person if you follow his career at all. Oh, yeah. But he he has just been special. And I, I, I just and, and and I do the scheme is Banner told me six months ago, because Joe's a big tape guy, just said, I am telling you the tape is a big he goes, the, the, the scheme is really important. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it's helped him. And, you know, I, I know I, I was skeptical a little bit of that, uh, more than maybe a little bit, just, just this sort of a thing that the Eagles don't nor normally do, but he has been a perfect fit and the running harder, as you mentioned, I think that's a, that's a big deal. That is something you're right, that you just didn't see him doing with the giants. In fact, his contact balance wasn't great. And, um, now, now you're giving see him second life, new environment, doing really nicely there. So no doubt about it, the offensive MVP of the team, most improved player. There's a couple, of, and this is offense, right? Yeah, most improved yep. player, offense. There were a couple of guys that went through my mind. Your guy was Cam Jurgens. He's definitely ahead of schedule. I, I didn't say he was great, but he's been pretty good. He's he's definitely improved. Well, he's starting for the first year, but just as a football player. From his first two years in limited playing time to now, he's definitely he's made a major improvement. Yeah, yep, he's been improved. Um, I think Grant Calcaterra is a guy who mm -hmm. probably could uh, fill in there. Um, he's been he's not a great blocker. He never was, but at least he's adequate. And when Dallas Goddard missed four games, he was able to get in there and be adequate. But then also establish a little bit of a uh, a nice pass catching rapport with Jalen Hurts. So yep. that was nice to see as I well. I agree with that one. Good yeah, call. and you, you can almost make an argument, too, for Dickerson because Dickerson in the past has always been more of a mauler than a pass protector, but I don't remember too many, if any, big-time, um, uh, you know, allowing, you know, stunts or games or, or just pressures. I think he's done a pretty good job in pass pro. He's already a two-time pro bowler, so it's not I'm, – I'm just throwing in a little side note here, but there was a little bit of pass pro issues that he's had in the past that I have not seen this year, so good for him on that. You know, it's funny, just real quick before we move on, we like never talk about the guy because we talk about Jurgens, you know, every once mm -hmm. in a while. We talk about Becton, the story he's been. Steen's played really well filling in. Lane, obviously, we talk about a lot. Fred Johnson, his great story. I think we've talked about Dickerson probably three minutes this season. <laughs> <laughs> probably. It's so funny. It's yeah. a shame on us. Yeah. yeah, no, no, but definitely some room improvement there. Yep. All right, this one is the toughest one. Best coaching job on offense, man. Whew. There's, there's a so lot of good candidates here. I, I got to tell you, I didn't know much about Jamal Singleton. I, I taught, I, I wanted to learn about him, so I talked to some coaches who work with him, and he's a, he's he coaches really hard, but really well, and guys guys respond to him. And his work with Barkley, I got to think, because the, the second level, the, the the vision run and the second level running, which Saquon was never good at, I don't, I I, I can't imagine he did this on his own. It has to be coaching. Coaching has something to do with it. Yeah, and I think it, Saquon's actually um, pointed that out in oh, uh, has, okay, a story good. he did with somebody that that he really okay. credited Jamal. Good, good. And Jamal's their running backs coach, assistant head coach. And Gainwell, by the way, I he had a better training camp. I know he's not explosive. Kenny's improved. Gives And obviously, everyone knows Jeff Statlin, the run game coordinator, O-line coach. His incredible work with Becton. I ran into someone who used to work for the Eagles in my training camp tour, and he laughed. He said this, he goes, this is total stout. The, the guy said, he goes, stout's a stud. If anyone could get it done, it's stout. He goes, I, I don't see it happening. First of all, it's back to his injury history. I got to tell you, it's working, man. I, I don't know how the hell this guy does it. The Fred Johnson story, which is phenomenal. And it, it's been well written about Fred's career and how he struggled with stuff. And he's been very serviceable. Great find by Howie and his staff and stout. And Tyler Steen, another one, man. This is, he moved him from tackle and college to guard. Phenomenal. So far, yeah, I mean, it's uh, the, the Stoutland touch has worked again. So those would be the two that really jump out. Jamal Singleton. You agree with these? Jeff you yeah, I do. I really do. Um, even You know, I don't want to get too – who's the tight ends coach again? I forget his name now. Jason Michael's good. He does Jason good Michael. I, I would give him a little bit of a, a credit, a little nod, but mm -hmm. certainly, uh, certainly Stoutland and Jamal Singleton lead the way there. All right, we'll go through the defensive awards in a second. First, we are going to pause to hear a word from our great friends at Sky Motor Cars. Sky Motor Cars in Westchester is a different sort of dealership. All it takes is one look at their Highline pre-owned vehicles that people over the country want to see. Owner Brett Schilder, make sure you don't spend a dime of your money before you purchase the car. Sky Motor Cars allows you to make all the decisions regarding your next vehicle. At Sky Motor Cars, you never have to spend more than necessary. Visit SkyMotorCars.com today or call 610-918-7225. And if you hop into Sky Motor Cars out there in Westchester, PA, make sure you tell them Adam just sent you. You will get a great deal, and it'll be a wonderful car buying experience. Lots of great inventory at Sky Motor Cars, and 
Like I said, if you can't get in, go to skymotorcars.com. All right, defensive MVP. I can't even believe this. I can't believe it. It's the biggest. I think uh, there's I, one I, clear answer, and I can't even believe we're going to say it. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm thinking. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking. Okay, I'm thinking. No, I don't want to say it. Go ahead. Uh, it's got. No, I mean, sure. who, it, who, who? There are some interesting names. I mean, certainly just based on that New Orleans Saints game alone, Jalen Carter has played well, and Quinion Mitchell has done, and Cooper DeGene has come in and given you something. But but Zach Bond is going yeah. to be the first half so far MVP on defense. I don't know who else would be. No, it, I, I was joking. No, it, it it honestly, he's the defensive MVP. Barkley, the two best players so far for the Eagles are Barkley and Zach Bond. Free Zach signings. Bond. Unbelievable. And thank you, Vic Fangio, for telling the truth of what happened. Yep. So Howie wanted Bond to be a backup edge. Okay. Vic's like, no, I see him. He said this, folks. That, right, I don't I forget which reporter asked it, but it was great. And he goes, No, I saw him as an off-the-ball uh, uh, inside backer. I forget exactly whether uh, it's the same thing, off the ball inside backer, and the scheme is inside. So anyway, and it's just one of those all-time stories. Like you couldn't predict this. Everybody wants Zach to be resigned. Joe Banner thought absolutely. They, I I almost fainted when you asked him on our interview last week when Joe said they, they kind of have to resign him. I'm like, wait, did you just say that? <laughs> Joe said that. At, Joe, who who didn't want to pay linebackers, but Joe thought that was a misnomer. He goes, he never wanted their linebackers to be a detriment. Right. That's what he. That's what he meant. But anyway, Zach. Bond but sometimes, is a, they <laughs> sometimes they were. A thousand times, and Joe Joe told us that story over the years with. They would just take what did he call those uh, the the dart, dart throws throw? at the end? <laughs> ridiculous! It's so ridiculous. To grab a linebacker from you know Upsilon State Community College. You, you know and, Brian it was a Brian Roll. What was the little small guy? Oh yeah, the little five eight guy from Ohio State. Yeah. I mean, come on, man! Really, the, the Greg Lloyd Jr. He's got all the, the, the end of the draft. But anyway, Zach Bond and I love his temperament and I, I enjoy his story and he's, he's talked about Fangio and how Vic believed in him and. Uh, this is one of the stories like you can't believe. And and it's funny when we were training camp, you know, what we had heard was that the thing they like about Bond is he doesn't make the same mistake twice, but I didn't see these great, his ability to King diagnose and blow plays up is ridiculous. Yeah. And the other part is he's really good in coverage. Are you serious? (laughs) I mean, all the first round picks on this defense, right? Whether it's Jordan Davis or Jalen Carter or Nolan Smith, Brandon Graham, and we're talking about a guy who never even played the position before has been there first. I mean, that is just, a, you know, a third round pick. Was he a third or fourth round? I forget. He was uh, a, a third day, round. A day two pick for another team who never was really much other than a special teamer and a backup edge rusher. And now he's their, their best linebacker. I, I, stranger things have happened, but not too many stranger than that. So Zach Bond, so far, defensive MVP of the Eagles. Nobody could have predicted that. Most improved player on defense. I know you're a candidate. I, I I guess that's probably the best one. I had another guy in mind, but he doesn't play right. much. So um, so you would pick Nicobe Dean, right? Have to. He he's and uh Greg told us on uh Tuesday night uh for I I think we were doing the inside the tape show. And he said Dean has not been bad in coverage, like he's not perfect. He, Obviously, but he's not been the detriment that we th- we saw in training camp. I got to tell you, I was very worried about him in coverage in training camp, and it, they haven't. Now I know they haven't played. They, they haven't played the Ravens tight ends, you know, Andrews and Likely and Charlie Kohler. They got to go against Frymouth. It's all of a sudden coming alive with Russell Wilson. Um, they play Arts this week, of course. You know, Zach. Yeah, you know, he can get open though, and they, they've got. You saw Mike Kosicki get him, but. I'm telling you, the Kobe's, but he's developing. He, he's definitely developing. He's now looking like a good third round pick. Yeah, absolutely. This is starting to give you reminders of two when they went to the Super Bowl with TJ Edwards and Kaiser. You were not only not ashamed of Eagles linebackers, but you were actually impressed by Eagles yeah. linebackers, both of them. So that's good. Uh, I, the only guy I would put in, and I don't know if it's it's probably not fair, he doesn't play as many snaps and he's rotational, but he's really played well, and that's Milton Williams. Yeah, uh, in his what fourth year, right? This is his fourth. Yes, year. it is. And, yeah. and here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. He he's really we don't. He's another guy we don't talk about enough. Like he's been good the previous two years. Yeah, he's just a really. And that's Greg's guy, Cosell's guy. He loves Milton Williams. Mm-hmm. 
because he was just he would Greg would ask us, does anyone talk to you about them? And they, people rarely bring them up. They what number is he? No, I, I don't remember. 93. 93, 93. I was just thinking of Javon Kirsch. It's funny the way I think <laughs> with ex Eagles. But they, people say, oh, nice player, but Greg is because Greg looks because he watches more Eagles tape than anyone that doesn't work for the Eagles. So anyway, you may watch more tape than more tape than the Eagles. <laughs> probably, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but uh, Milton Milton has been so good. I know Aleem McNeil is a better football player, but it's not. It, Aleem doesn't play the way Milton does because he can't. They play to kind of they're on the D line, but they don't play the same way. They're not used the same way. But anyway, I like you know that. He he actually improved the previous couple of years, but Nakobe's because we weren't sure about Nakobe to be honest with you. I, I was I was concerned about him. Yeah, you know, yeah, He's done a good yeah, job. No. And they, well, both of those guys have been really really important. Knock on wood, defense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But Bond has been in the history of our show. I've never seen a story like this. I, maybe, maybe you can. I, I can't think of anything that's so unlikely. I mean, they signed to be a backup edge rusher. <laughs> Get yeah. the hell out of here. <laughs> All right, anyway. best coaching job on the defense. This one to me is like I, there have been a bunch of guys. There are a couple of candidates here, but there's one to me that I'm just I'm giving it to because of how far this guy had to come from with his personnel, and that's Christian mm-hmm. Parker, the new defensive backs coach. Because of and listen, it's there's some recency bias that goes into this. Not that the Eagles line, but not that Bobby King doesn't have the same bias because Eagles linebackers haven't been great either over the years, <laughs> but. The way the Eagles secondary functioned last year, or dysfunctioned, as I should say. <laughs> and I get that there's some new talent there, so that has helped Christian Parker. But we've seen the Eagles put new talent or new players in the backfield on defense before, and it did not work out. For Christian Parker to come in here, get these young kids playing well, get Reed Blankenship in the right position again you know, to, to be a successful player and not making mistakes, to have these guys understand how to defend – bunch formations, misdirection, motion. Do they mess up every once in a while? Sure, but it doesn't matter. There's so much more discipline, so much more keyed in, playing at so much higher of a level than last year and preceding years that I cannot give it to anybody other than Christian Parker. All right, so I got it. On addition to him, he's the pass game coordinator. It's kind of funny, but they call it for defense and DB's coach. I know, right? Fancy <laughs> term. Probably got him more money. But Bobby King has been – I. I know a little bit other than Bond was been good the whole season except for one game, but Dean was not great early on. Then he got he's gotten better. We've heard behind the scenes Trotter's been pretty good. But the Zach Bond story, again, Bobby, this gets Bobby King like major mention. Good for him, who's a veteran linebackers inside backers coach. So he's been great. Roy Anderson has works with the corners with DeGene. Now I I don't know if um I well he's t- I know Vic's going to, he's not a corner. I get it. DeGene, he's a nickel. Okay, whatever. Uh, but whoever's coaching DeGene, whether it's, um, it's a, what's the guy, Joe, Joe Casper or, or Ray Anderson, whatever, whoever's doing it, give him credit. And obviously Mitchell, who's really never been a press man. He never played one step of press man corner in his life until the senior bowl. That's right. a fact. He's getting better and better in man coverage. I know they don't throw at him a lot. We're going to see Thursday night, though. We're going to see with Scary Terry. You mentioned earlier Dami Brown, who could run, who's got good size. Now, Halamide Sakias, former mm-hmm. Eagle. Uh, but we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. But I'm going to tell you, these coaches deserve major credit. Shout out to all of them. Really have done a phenomenal job after the nonsense of last season. The, it, it, this has been refreshing. And one more thing, give Harry Roseman credit. We're very critical of some of his drafts. But you know what? If you go through the last four years, it's taken a while, but a lot of these guys are developing. And that's the thing we heard about Sirianni is in his interview, he he mentioned that when he interviewed with the Eagles. I don't know how, exactly how he said it, but we had heard that he talked about he they're going to put a focus on player development. And you're sure as hell seeing it. I mean, it, it, it both sides of the football guys are developing. It's It's been a long time since we've said that. I mean, it's not always been good, but guys are getting developed. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look now. I know the 2020 draft stunk other than Hurts. Terrible, terrible. Um, other than Hertz, 2021 right. is Jordan Davis, so not great, but I think that... 22 is Davis. 22 Dickers- is Davis. Oh, who's 21? 21 was phenomenal, Dickerson and, and Skinny Batman. Who was... The- oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, no, that that really... That really listen to great. Football at 4. By yeah. the way, listen to Tuesday's Football at 4. I actually went over this with Mike Gill. It was on my list to get to. Is um, to- I wanted to talk about 
the, the those four drafts, 21, 22, 23, and what the early returns on 24. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, you want to get two starters at a minimum of every draft. Now, obviously, over the f- rookie's contract, over the four years. And they've got a good chance to get two starters out of each one of those drafts. Now, is Jordan Davis been disappointing? Yes, it's a fact. Okay, He's clearly not even close to what they were thought. It is what it is. But a lot of guys are developing. The key is development. Guys are actually developing and give the coach the reason why we brought this stuff up. You don't get better without coaching. This idea, guys just get like, what are they going to roll the ball out themselves? Right. I mean, right. they get co- like I'm telling you, Barkley never has been this good. Not even close. Even I when agree. he put up major numbers, he's never been this complete. That's the term I've been looking for. Thank you. Sure. Complete is the running back. Phenomenal. Hundred percent. All right, great episode. Really enjoyed doing that. That is going to do it for this edition of Inside the Birds. We got Inside the Birds pregame and postgame Thursday. It's going to be a wild night of football for the Eagles. That's going to do it for Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. And as always, we thank you for flying with us, Inside the Birds. Be sure to check out our friends at phlsportsnation.com. They're enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams for the fan by the fan is their motto. So make sure you check them out at phlsportsnation.com and on Twitter at phlsportsnation.